Hello. Hello, it's Kathy from Chilled Mama here. I just want to go through some of the most common home birth myths. One of the things is there's lots of lots about home births and you know midwives and doulas and everybody's going, oh home birth, home birth, home birth. But it can be really hard to decide to go for a home birth if you don't know anything about it. And if you're surrounded by people um, whose only knowledge of home birth are these myths. And I've just picked the top three. I'm going to start with one of the things that people, what about the mess? Why do you want a home birth and have all that mess in your house? And my first thought is, what mess? <laughs> um, Generally, it's not much, particularly if you're doing if you're giving birth in the pool. And the midwives are very good at catching it all. And the midwives will clear it all up. They won't empty the pool. That's up to your birth partner or partners. A good reason to get doula. Um, but the midwives will clear everything else up. And when you've had your golden hour and your lovely cuddles and your skin to skin, and you go and have like a bath or a shower that's when the midwives will clear it all up and I tell you you wouldn't know that it had been there that you'd given birth they, they're brilliant and they take it, most of it away with them might leave a few things that are non you know um non-bloody they might leave for you to put in your bin um but everything else they take away with them so really you haven't got to worry too much about the mess some people say oh well you know I'm I'm sick with labour. Well, some people get sick with gas and air and things. Um, but you have you've got your own bathroom you can go and be sick in. Midwives do bring back um things to um the sick bowls, they're not very big, are they? But um, you know, you manage you're, you're sick at home all the time, you know, all the time, but you know, you're used to doing with sick at home, it's not a problem. Um and so mess really not a bother. The other myth, um that everybody says is, I had a lot, said a lot to me. I've had four out of my five um, babies at home. And I used to get, why Why would you be a martyr? Um, so oh, I had my babies at home. Well, why would you be a martyr? Well, no, I want, you know, go to hospital and get all the drugs. That's what, you know, that's what I recommend. And that's fine. If you want to go to hospital and get all the drugs, then go to hospital. Not everybody wants that. Um, and actually i'm just seeing yeah but there's only sort of three types of pain artificial pain relief available and you can have two of those at home it's only an epidural that you can't get at home and actually that's one of the reasons why people choose a home birth is because they don't want to have an epidural um and the good news is that the birthplace study uh, that looked at comparing low risk women to low risk women giving birth in different areas women giving birth at home only i wrote it down only eight percent of those of low risk women planning a home birth ended up with an epidural compared with 31 percent of low risk women who planned a hospital birth so if you want to avoid an epidural then yeah give your birth to your baby at home avoiding an epidural doesn't actually mean that you're having to deal with horrendous pain um and i'm always you know if you're in horrendous pain then get something to do with it but the thing is that actually those women are not needing an epidural because it wasn't that painful and um, why does home birth stop mean it's not that painful well you know the Gas and air and pethidine actually work by um, because they're muscle relaxants. So the more relaxed you are, the less pain you feel, and you're more relaxed at home, aren't you? So, and um, the other thing is that the with the epidural, it um, blocks the nerve pathway going up the spine, so the the central nervous system sending the messages up to the brain. Um, and you know a birth pool does that too uh, getting in the birth pool that the pressure of the water the warmth of the water also it because that 
acts on the somatic nervous system, which gets the brain faster, your brain isn't as aware of the sensations of discomfort. Um, which is like, like while well, we rub our knee and then doesn't hurt so much, we scrape our knee and we rub it, it doesn't hurt so much. So, um, but also at home, you've got lots of other things to help you with the pain because there are there are lots and lots of non-pharmaceutical methods or pharmacological methods of pain relief moving about um rocking swaying singing breathing um touch and cuddles and massage all these things bring down the level of discomfort and i can honestly tell you um with my i've done five babies without any pain relief it's not i'm not looking for a mental but i'm just saying i had strategies to bring that level down to help to keep me relaxed and i was i was very aware when i had my fifth baby i was really you know you have your have your work brain on a bit and i was very aware that there was pain there you know but while i was having you know only during the contractions while i was having the contraction the wave the surge every because i was in the pool i was at home i was either breathing through the contraction or i was singing i was being as relaxed as possible and i felt really well supported i had my my partner i had uh, one of my best friends as a birth partner and um, like a doula for me and I had really lovely midwives who were really respectful. So I had all those things and each one of those things brought the level of discomfort down and down and down to the point where I actually could honestly say I would, it was not painful at all. I was very aware that if I stopped doing any of those things, then it, it was waiting <laughs> for me. But by keeping on top of it, by doing all these things, it brought the the discomfort right down so you know yeah you don't have an epidural but you don't you're not being it's not about being a martyr in fact a lot of people say it's uh you know being a bit of a martyr going into hospital because actually i'm staying at home because i know it's going to be less painful and that brings me on to another thing people say aren't you brave aren't you brave and do you thinking why why is it brave to give birth at home i don't get that one i th i think people mean that it's risky because they often say oh i think you're very brave if i i, I wouldn't have a home birth because i needed all this intervention um or you know oh no people also say you know well if i'd had my babies at home they would have died and you're thinking, well, people that plan home births don't say, all oh, right, you know, if my baby's in danger, I'm not going in. I'm going to have my baby here and watch my baby die. It's not, that doesn't happen. You, of course you don't. But by starting off at home, you maximise your chance of everything going well. And um, you're certainly not putting your baby at risk. There is no research to show that more babies die at home births at all. In fact, um, the outcomes for babies generally are much better. Um, I missed something I was going to say. Um, yeah, home birth isn't for everybody and it isn't for every situation. So there are some situations where giving birth in hospital is probably a good idea. Um, but most women could give birth at home. The other thing, actually, that you are less likely to need intervention at home. Again, going back to that birthplace study, and it compared like with like. So it compared low risk women giving planning to give birth at home and low risk women planning to give birth in hospital. The ones, the only difference really was that between them was where they planned to give birth. And the ones who planned to give birth at home actually had less intervention. The cesarean rate for first timers giving who plan to give birth at home is only nine percent that's emergency cesareans the emergency cesareans for first timers low risk first timers who plan to give birth in hospital is 16 percent, and that's a huge difference the oh so 
and you're much more likely to end up with a cesarean if you plan a hospital birth. You're much more likely to have an episiotomy or tear if, if you plan a hospital birth. You are much more likely to have it if you plan a hospital birth. And that even goes for, for higher risk women. So women who've had feedback, women with high BMIs, it's actually all these into all these um hemorrhage cesarean forceps tearing episiotomies all the things we want to avoid are much more likely to happen in hospital so uh, frankly i think the women who give birth in hospital are brave so giving birth um that's a total myth that you need to be brave to give birth at home and i think i'll come to the end oh yeah the midwives don't they don't if they are if they are concerned they transfer you um we are really lucky we have a very well integrated um maternity care and midwives will not take the risk they will always suggest transferring well ahead of of issues and that comes down to what is the because people say oh no well you know you don't really have much equipment at home it's better to give birth in hospital because that's where all the equipment is but i tell you the most important piece of equipment to have at a birth is a midwife's eyes and her ears because midwives can spot they get to know you and they can spot when trouble when things aren't going as well and you might need help um but it's not surprising these myths ha carry around that your friends, your family, even your doctor or your obstetrician uh, might not know all about home birth. I did have a doula client who, whose obstetrician actually said to her um, that he didn't recommend it home birth because she might hemorrhage, nothing to do with why she was seeing him, but she might hemorrhage and midwives at home births don't have anything to do with, and don't have anything with them to do with hemorrhage, which is actually not true. <laughs> midwives do have drugs and they do have training about dealing with hemorrhage. So midwives are very prepared for emergencies. So anyway, enough of me rattling on. If you would like to know more, I have a webinar on Tuesday evening answering all your questions about home birth and uh, the i'll put the link under this video or have a look on my website which is chillmama.co.uk thanks very much for tuning in Tara. do i want to end the live video now yes i do